Hello everyone, Mike Money Gamer here, and I'm here with Kingdom Hearts. Now, um, funny story here. I am, as you can tell already, post uh, commentating over this video. And um, the funny thing is, I could have sworn I did a commentary file for this, but I can't find it. And so my only guess is that it didn't save, it um, may have um, experienced problems, I don't know. But anyway, I don't even mention it in the next episode, so um, if you're wondering, is there going to be like a, um, what do I usually call it, a um, excuse or something in the next episode, there won't be. So, yeah. What's funny is, originally I thought this was episode 21, but this is actually episode 22, because I already have Kingdom Hearts Part 21 up. And so when I looked at my uh, commentary files, I had part 22, 23, and 24, I believe, um, commentary files recorded. Because, you know, I usually do about three or four episodes per uh, session. But the weird thing is, when I looked, I just didn't have a part 22 that matched this episode. So I was like, oh, well. Okay, and this is funny. I accidentally go back to... Um, Oh no, I don't. I actually go into the garage. Okay, I thought I went back to the place back. So I was like, "No, nah, what the hell did I just do?" But I was actually going to show you um, some of the stuff I got in the inventory that we could use to build a ship or anything like that. You know, um, realistically, I don't know why. I think I was just showing you the warp G as well. But um, we need that to get to new areas l later in the game. But for right now, we could go ahead and go through here, which is what I think we do. Yeah, I think I was actually talking about it here. I was, like, showing that there was two options you could go to. Um, I forget if I actually mentioned what worlds they are, because I know that um, the one I'm thinking of that's actually a little bit easier is what I said is this way, but actually it's not true. The one that's... Out of terms of difficulty, this one can be actually a little bit harder compared to the other way that you can take. As well, though, the other level that's to the uh, left that we could have gone uh, can randomly take you uh, to another level, I think, as well. But that might not be until an event later on. I don't really know for certain. And as you can tell, I'm having a little bit of trouble with the uh, controls. It's kind of fun. Anyway, you'll stop here and um, one of the um, chipmunks will tell you, hey, that looks suspicious. We should go into it. More or less. I didn't get a chance to read it. Yeah, um, these wormholes, which is kind of interesting, they actually do sometimes have harder enemies and more difficult challenges for you to do. But they actually don't really get that expansive uh, in this game when it comes to these gummy ships. I know I don't like mentioning sequels and all that in my episodes, but I have to be honest. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 has really more expansive um, gummy ship levels than um, Kingdom Hearts 1 here. To me, it's kind of funny, but it's true at the same time. It's like, um, they did their best on these, but really, they're kind of just interesting little challenges for you to do. They're not really, like, like, truthfully, they wouldn't even be required, you know, if, um, they had a different way for you to go to new areas, but of course they don't. I mean, they could have made it like a world map type thing where it's like, you click somewhere, this is where you're going next. You don't have to actually, um, <laughs> you know, fly through anything. You may have noticed I, may ha I had a little bit of trouble um, grabbing those items. The only reason I can think of as to why I would have trouble is because it's just going off screen, and that's something you'll find a lot in these Gemma Ship levels as well. Is you're about to try to grab something, you have to like go and hug the screen just to get it. You know, the screen's edge. And I don't know why I tried to destroy those yellow ones. I don't think you can. I think they're just there to um, give you a challenge to avoid. 
And as you can tell, yeah, I do hit a lot of them. But there's the level I was talking about, and it should look familiar to those who have played the game before. Or those that watched any Disney movies for that part. <laughs> and here I am discussing it. I'm like, oh, that's not the place I thought we were going to, but that's not, that's alright, you know? Cool. I think that's what I said. And as always, we have our cool little intro here. You gotta admit, it is actually pretty cool. And the keyhole? The heartless are searching for it now. I'm certain we'll find it soon enough. So that just leaves. <coughs> Jafar, I've looked everywhere for Jasmine. She disappeared like magic. <laughs> the girl is more trouble than she's worth. You said you had things under control. Agrabah is full of holes for rats to hide in. But why worry about Princess Jasmine? With her or without her, surely this world will be ours when we find the keyhole. We need all seven princesses of heart to open the final door. Any fewer is useless. Well, if the princess is that important, we'll find her. Find Jasmine and bring her to me at once. <laughs> Don't steep yourself in darkness too long. The heartless consume the careless. <laughs> Your concern is touching, but hardly necessary. So yeah, as we heard there, that's the first we ever hear of the, you know, princesses of heart. Um, at this time, there's no real, um, what's the word I'm trying to find here? like definite way of finding out what that means exactly and the final door that's mentioned is not really like spelled out to us either so for the most part you just have to kind of guess what it's going to be which I'm sure not a lot of people have trouble with it but um as always just in case anybody's not seen these videos make sure not to you know sp put spoils in the comments which usually I don't have to worry about which is nice so, not a big deal, right? Anyway, as you can see, I'm basically just like running around showing you stuff. Um, basically showing you where to get treasures and stuff for the most part. Some of them are very easy to get at this time. Others, not so much. Like, there's one in this room that can actually be kind of difficult to get. But I think I go ahead and manage to get it anyway. I go ahead and save it first. <laughs> oh. <laughs> My cat's very lonely right now as well, so you get to hear you get to hear me talk to her a little bit too, which is really nice, I'm sure for some of you. Yeah, eventually I do find out what you can do to get up there. Cause I do remember getting this treasure chest at some point. That was weird. It made like the sound effect of him attacking, but he didn't attack. <laughs> I hit Goofy with that. I don't know if I mentioned that in the last recording or not. Like I said, I do remember doing commentary over this. I just don't remember if I was actually recording or what, but... Oh, I guess I don't get it. I know that there is a way to, but I just don't remember exactly what it is. Because at, at some point in the game, there is a lot of backtracking to be done. And at that point, it's kind of... What's the word I'm looking for? 
um, silly to go back in a way. It might feel like that at least. But um, it's the only way to get everything in these areas is to do a backtracking at some point. You know, we're going to run into a new enemy around here at some point. And it's one of the um, area's more annoying enemies. Anyway, when that character throws his sword at you, you can actually hit it back at him if you are good, if you have good timing. And you'll do damage and also get tech points. So, yeah. And remember, technique points in this game are just extra bonus points of uh, experience. Oh, never mind. I thought there was a new enemy we'd see here, because I see like a picture of one in this, in the thumbnail, but no, we haven't actually run into it yet. You'll know him when you see him, though. Now, just in case you're wondering what we're supposed to be doing right now, actually, we're just supposed to be, um, looking around town, trying to see where we are. Um, yeah, there he is, right there. That's the enemy I was talking about. Um, by themselves, they're not really much of a threat. But, um, in large groups, those can actually be really annoying enemies to be against. So, just keep an eye out on them. Um, that's right, I actually go over here, and this is where we're gonna get another cutscene. I'm not really going to read the uh, text here. I could, since I actually did before, but um, you can just uh, pause it and read it to yourself because I don't remember how fast I was doing this for, so um, I don't want to attempt to do it and then mess it up. <laughs> I love how the way that uh, line is put, it's like, he helped me. It makes her sound like she's saying, um, Where might I find this street rat? that Jafar helped her. Jasmine, allow me to find you more suitable company, my dear princess. These little rats won't do you a seat. Jasmine, run! Ah, the boy who holds the key. <laughs> I like how they do that transition there. Uh, you know, you'll notice that a lot throughout this game. They really, really like to just transition from text to uh, speech and kind of go back and forth on it. They don't really do it like a whole lot to make it where it makes it annoying but they do tend to um, do it pretty decent amount of times but it won't bother you trust me I whenever I see it I actually think it's kind of cool I don't know what what most of people think but for me whenever I see it I'm like oh that's kind of neat how they did that but mainly the reason why I think they did it is because you know he was off screen and they don't they didn't want to have the word bubble just appear. Also, they show you off those little puzzles right there. That if you jump across those windowsills, they'll close. Um, yeah. I also love how you mainly run into those little shadow enemies more than anything else in this area. It's kind of funny how you should be running into enemies that are, you know, in my mind, unique to the area a lot more than anything else. But they tend to just put everything and anything in levels in this game, which is kind of cool at the same time. Because then you never get old, like, you never get, like, completely overrun by new enemies. Because you're always with something that's at least somewhat familiar. Anyway, um, I head to Aladdin's house because that's actually what you are supposed to do next, if I remember right. I actually missed something in here too. There's actually another keyhole that will unlock something in this area. I think I miss it at this time. 
Uh, what you're supposed to do is move this to save the carpet. Doing so, he will say, follow me, more or less, and go out the window. And so, yeah, he's supposed to fly off. He's supposed to go follow him to the desert. But yeah, since the camera doesn't really move, there's actually a keyhole right there in the left corner where that little bookcase was. If you just move it out of the way, you can get to the keyhole. I don't know if it's really necessary for you to do it right now, but it's just something you can do. Yeah, I do fall off here. Which kind of annoyed me, but I was like, oh well, it's not like it's that big a deal. Because you can get that treasure chest later. Which I actually forget about it, which is actually kind of funny. Because I say I'm going to get it back. I say that now that I'm going to get it later, but I actually real remembered just now that no, I actually don't ever go in back and get it that I remember. I think it's actually for the best that I get it in a uh, future recording, whenever that may be. I haven't actually decided what I'm going to do. I haven't actually recorded anything in a while, to be honest. I've been just trying to get caught up, which I am almost caught up, which is really surprising me. I used to have like a stack up to like, when I'm sitting down up to my shoulder of DVDs that need to be put on my computer. <laughs> now it's just like a teeny tiny one. There's no reason to save here, I just do it for the sake of doing it. Um... I thought something else was going to happen at this point, but it doesn't happen at all in this game, actually. This is kind of cool, though, this little cutscene here of you riding off. Who knows how that happened? <laughs> but yeah, there's Aladdin in the... Um, quicksand there. You can actually go into the quicksand, which is kind of funny, and you won't get hurt by it, or even affected by it. Also, you notice there that um, Sora's combo, he did take that twice. Interesting fact is if you get your um, movement, um, you know, interrupted, he will actually continue to try to do it again, in some cases. And that was me showing you off that you won't get hurt by the quicksand. And I love how the enemies appear here, they just kind of like stick their sword out of the ground and then jump up. But after you kill them all, you get stopped in place and then you, um, save Aladdin. Gorge, not again! Then he Genie, get rid of these guys. <laughs> Wish number one to come and ride up. That was a waste of a wish if you really think about it, but what are you gonna do? I see. <laughs> Thanks, Sora. Aladdin, what are you doing out here? Same old stuff, hunting legendary treasure. Just paid a visit to the Cave of Wonders. I found that magic carpet. And this lamp. Legend has it that whoever holds the lamp can summon... Please, kid, leave the intros to a professional. The one and only genie of the lamp. Rub it up, dub the lamp, and have your dearest wishes granted. This winner is Aladdin. Congratulations. I'm on rush. Patience, my fine feathered friend. Any three wishes. Oh, one wish, a two wish, a three wish. Then I make like a banana and split. Our lucky winner made his first wish. And let me tell you what a doozy that wish was. So he has two left. So, Master, what do you have for wish number two? How about making me a fabulously wealthy prince? Whoa! Money, royalty, fame! Why didn't I do that? Okay, you asked for it. A hundred 
and servants and a hundred candles loaded with gold. Just say the word and I'll deliver it in 30 minutes or less or your meal free. Hey, I'll even throw in a cappuccino. <laughs> no thanks. Okay. I think I'll put that on hold until we reach Agrabah. Oh, why a prince? You see, there's this girl in Agrabah named Jasmine. But she's a princess. And I'm... Uh, she could never fall for a guy like me. Oh. Princess? Jasmine? Oh, that's right. She's in trouble, Aladdin. What? Well, come on, let's get going. So, like, the story does kind of play out the same where, you know, Aladdin's in love with Jasmine, which we know from the, um story of Aladdin, which if you've ever seen the movie, I feel sorry for you. And, um, I make a really interesting decision here. I decided to keep Donald, which is something I never did in my personal playthroughs, but I chose to do this time. Anyway, we got one more cuts in here, and then I'll finish my story. Get out much, huh? Comes with a job. A nominal cosmic powers, itty bitty living <laughs> space. It's always three wishes, then back to my portable prison. I'm lucky to see the light of day every century or two. Say, Genie, what if I use my last wish to free you from the lamp? What do you think? You do that? Genie, it's a promise. After we help Jack. <laughs> Anyway, once you get back to town, it's the same thing that happened before. You have to fight a bunch of Heartless to get to where you think Jasmine might be. So as always, your team starts <laughs> attacking before you have a chance to know what's going on. <laughs> I think that's really a bad thing, if you really think about it. Now, this uh, guy here, since he's using fire, is actually weak against um, Blizzard, if you want to just use magic against him. Especially if that's your uh, main focus is magic, then you want to definitely use a bunch of blizzard spells on him, which... I'm actually just showing off his sword, which is funny. Because <laughs> I never did that whenever I first, when I played the game by, like, from my personal playthrough, I never actually looked at their weapons. And the protect chain and whatever actually got automatically equipped on him, I didn't have to do that. And it's not... It's not like you take it off of him and you have an extra one. That's actually just what he has. when Because he takes it out of your inventory. <clears throat> now, I don't know if that's because I left it on the last character I had or whatever. But it's kind of neat that it does that. Anyway, here's his um, abilities. I actually read them all off to you in my uh, commentary. but And this one I won't. But you, I go by slowly enough on the ones that we haven't seen. To show you basically what they all are. Usually I would take off um, Crescent and any of the other ones that actually use MP, but there's really no point now that I'm playing in a different way. <sighs> but the problem is you run out of potions and ethers really fast because uh, Aladdin's default. Um, use of items is actually to use them whenever you're like not even like close to half health and I didn't realize that until um, a little bit later so it's gonna be kind of funny uh, me uh, finding that out in the later episodes anyway we're nearing the end here um, Basically, as to tell you what we're going to be doing, we're going to be heading back to Aladdin's uh, place. But um, until then, I'm just going around town, finding Heartless, trying to find the way to get there. Don't worry if you fall down here, though. Oh, and um, as you see, Donald actually used a weird move there. It's actually called Arrow, and I didn't know that during this time. And I don't know. I didn't know you can't look at his uh, spells. At least I haven't figured out a way to do that. <coughs> and, um... I think we actually have the spell, too. I don't know if we've learned it yet, and I just haven't noticed. But, um... 
I know when I saw that, I was like trying to guess what it was, and I was saying, is it this, is it this, is it this, and then I'm like, no, it's not any of that. Like, I, I think one of my funniest guesses was reflect, and I was like, no, it can't be reflect, because uh, if it was, what enemy actually would use a spell on you that needs to be reflected? And then I thought, well, these guys. But then I thought to myself, well, really, there's no point in having a spell that does that, because in Final Fantasy games, you know, reflect lasts forever. Well, on this one, it's timed, so it wouldn't be um, beneficial to have it in this game, I don't think. But the spell that they do use is called Arrow, and what it does is it allows you to take three hits of damage without taking any damage. And um, that includes any kind of attack, like projectile or otherwise. And it will be important that you have that spell throughout this area at some point, which I don't use it at all until I get near the end of the area. But don't worry, it's not like it's a big deal. Yeah, once I get up here and watch this cutscene, the idiot video will end, so I'm just gonna let it kind of run on its own. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. It's not actually a talking scene. I thought it was. Anyway, um, basically they're talking about the keyhole, which is interesting. I like how Sora's like, ah, oh, come on, this is annoying. But yeah, um, I don't know where to go to find Jasmine at this time, so I just decided to stop here for a second and then find that out. And um, in the next episode, regular commentary will be back, so don't worry about that. Till then, everyone. Bye.